to give a very simple framework before we talk about Batman specifically. The basic physiological concepts on the left here, and that simply is that if you have some kind of stimulus to evoke a response, you have a response, and then the outcome of this response is to decrease the effect of the stimulus itself. It's called a negative feedback loop. So something happens, you adapt to the change, therefore the adaptation means that the thing that caused the thing in the first place isn't as much of a big deal. It's shown over here in a more simple way on the right. Anybody here ever play a stringed instrument of any kind, like a guitar, or violin, anything? Okay, some people are nodding but refusing to vote, so that's all right. You're allowed to do that. Simple way to think of this stress a adaptation is to think about the idea of learning to play a musical instrument, like a guitar. When a person starts, or if you just have your own fingertip and you haven't done anything, you find that you've got your know, skin that's fairly similar across most of your fingertips, reasonably soft, unless you're doing a lot of you know, manual labor. Let's just say we're just average here. Your fingertip will look like this. Once you start fretting against the, the, uh, the fretboard on the guitar and moving your finger up and down and on, on the strings, over time, you'll develop a callus. And that's simply your body responding to the input, the stress, the gouging, a little bit of abrasion that was coming about from fretting the, the strings, giving rise to a callus, which now minimizes the effect of the use of the strings. So it's a very nice system where your body adapts to the input and therefore lets it, you keep doing the things you're doing. Of course, if you do too much, you get a blister, your body kicks you backwards a little bit till that recovers, and then you can go forward again. But basically, this idea right here can be used to understand all the adaptations you'd ever want to see in, in any athlete, in any job description that involves physical capacity, or in something like Batman. But when we think about Batman, we have to think beyond just fretting fingers on uh, the fretboard of a guitar. Instead, we got to ask ourselves, what stresses are actually needed to produce something like Batman? And by the way, here's another comic book sketch I found, this time in the 70s, from a story called Daughter of the Demon, where Batman's now shown a little safer, you know, he's got two hands in the barbell, which is good. I don't see any spotters still, but anyways, we'll just let that go. Uh, we've got other things here where he's doing some gymnastics, and he's doing some maybe uh, uh, track and field events and so on. So he's, they're starting to show a little bit more of the kind of skills and abilities he'd need. And when I looked at Batman, I did a kind of an occupational job assessment of him, and I said that, uh, well, Batman's primarily a martial artist, because to be fair, he can do all kinds of things, but the things that he's usually you know, shown doing are fighting people and, and, and doing a really good job at it. He's also an acrobatic gymnast. He's also got features of an emergency service, services provider, like a police officer or a firefighter. Maybe also a NASCAR driver, because he does this kind of crazy driving skills. He's got a, quite a few things he needs to be good at. But if we think about this, all these things together are what give him this all-around athlete tag, this best ultimate in human performance when we think of Batman and has contributed to Batman being a real global icon, one of those things that you can see in many cultures all around the world, people can recognize who people like Batman and Superman are. I want to just consider for a moment, though, purely the physical capabilities that we think about for somebody <coughs> like Batman. Here's Batman in the middle of this little diagram as the pinnacle of performance. We've got physical capacities like endurance, the ability for him to do some activities for you know, prolonged periods of time if he has to chase somebody down, for example. He's got to have a certain amount of strength, but maybe even more importantly, he's got to have power. So he's got to be able to move quickly and to have explosive movements. He's got to have agility. He's got very specific skill components that all together give us these, this idea, this pinnacle of physical performance. Some of the specific skills he'd do include gymnastics, acrobatics, parkour, and free running. Um, but in particular, martial arts is where I want to concentrate uh, in this example. So if we think about martial arts, I've circled it because the idea is, even within a skill like martial arts, we can imagine this idea that there's many different things that Batman actually does. Another uh, panel here shown from the mid-70s, um, a story in Batman number 260 called This One Will Kill You, Batman. Since Batman still exists and is well up into the 600s, now I can tell you Batman was not killed during this story, This One Will Kill You, Batman. Instead, we have him shown doing a variety of things. We can see he says he's doing Kung Fu and Judo and Aikido and plain old fisticuffs, whatever that actually means. The point is, Batman's shown doing all kinds of things, even within whatever would be fighting skills. He's got to be able to do a very wide range of things. And one of the things about Batman's skills, and we're going to look at a clip from the, the movie Batman Begins in a second, is this idea that 
Batman's skills have with it some extra bits that are, are different. Remember we talked earlier, I mentioned he's, the job requirements. You have to be able to do all the things without hurting anybody. And you have to go through this arduous skill training. And there's an ethical component. And there's also this idea of desire and will. And this clip that I'm going to show captures a bunch of this. And in particular, it captures the idea that Batman has to be able to do all of this and be very dispassionate. Meaning, he can't get himself all worked up and get emotional about something because that's when he makes a mistake. And we see that in this clip. So I'll just uh, run this here. So there's three main things in that clip that relate to what we were talking about. One is the severe physical nature of the kind of training and the adaptation and stress that you see in there. The other bit was this adage that Batman won't kill people. So he won't use lethal force. That comes up with that criminal who's in the movie is supposed to actually kill him, but he refuses to do it. And that's a big part of Batman's mystique, which speaks to the level of training, as we'll talk about. And the last bit was how he got emotional when the person, Ducard, that he was fighting with kept bringing up his family and his father and the things that happened to them until eventually he made a mistake. So Batman doesn't have the luxury of making any mistakes because he's fighting people who really will hurt him. So that's what's the, illustrated in that clip. If we go to the next bit here, we need to think about what you saw in there too is all these different things that even within a skill like martial arts or fighting ability, Batman needs skill at all kinds of technical levels. He needs to be able to ground fighting, close range fighting, middle range fighting, long range fighting. He needs to use weapons. He needs to use all kinds of things. He needs a really extensive amount of training to ever get to this. But I can hear some people saying right now, but what about the protection of the bat suit? Didn't somebody say that? At least in your head. I know I didn't hear it out loud. But were you thinking? He's got this fantastic bat suit. That bat suit's awesome. I wish I had a bat suit. Who doesn't want a bat suit? That thing is cool. It's uh, fireproof, uh, apparently you can swim in it, uh, whatever. It does all kinds of things. However, there's still a person inside that suit. So another layer of the kind of conditioning that Batman's body needs has to consider that. Despite the bat suit, he needs body conditioning as well. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what that is. But before, I, uh, I, this idea that Batman protects his suit, protects and arms him, but there's still a body inside. And it's important to understand how that body can be protected. And I remember very vividly not seeing a bat suit, but when I was uh, in Bermuda for my honeymoon with my wife and I were there, and there's a honeymoon, obviously we were there, but uh, anyhow, we were in Bermuda, and we went to this little museum that was uh, on the coast, and it was talking about, it was something about like a, a, a nautical heritage, but then this section that um, should have been called the foolish things that people do, but really was about the development of a shark suit that actually didn't work very well. But the thing was, this guy had this idea for a shark suit, and he had his mind fixed on he's going to make a suit that a shark can't bite through. So it's going to be super strong, cannot bite through that suit. And showed all the different examples they went through and how they tried this or that. And then they had a little video clip of the day they tried out the actual can't bite through a shark suit. And he puts it on. They slather, I don't know, sausage meat or blood or whatever all over themselves to attract the sharks because this is what you have to do to get the sharks to come up. Into the water he goes, great white shark comes up, grabs him by the arm, shaking him around. You can see his body going like all over the place under the water. Eventually he gets out of the grip of the shark, comes back onto the boat. As he hauls himself over, at first you see that the shark suit is still in perfect shape. Hey, that's awesome. Did not bite through the suit. Of course, when he takes his arm out of the suit, it's all hanging on a kind of crazy angle because the bones are essentially crushed all the way down wherever it was in the jaws of the shark. So yes, the suit protected the skin and the bite wound, but inside there's still a person. And Batman's got the same thing. Inside there's still a person that has to be protecting himself through his own training. So I'm going to talk about a specific kind of training that's known in martial arts, uh, some various Chinese traditions and some Okinawan ones in particular and some Thai traditions use this too. But I'm going to tell you, warning, do not do this at home, okay? You're not supposed to do this at home. And when I say this, I find it's necessary to say it twice, that I'm seriously saying you should not try this at home. This will be your last warning, number three, I'm not kidding. Do not do this at home. Or anywhere else, like visiting somebody else's home, also not okay. School, no. Don't do, don't do this, okay? But this is a tradition that was done with this idea of, remember the idea of fretting on the keyboard? Well, our bones will also respond to impact loading, and 
if I asked you, um, did you know that you're, you have bone density where you've got some mineralization of your bones that help make them stronger in certain activity patterns? And if I were to ask you, where do you think your bones are stronger? In your legs or in your arms? What would you say probably? Legs. legs. Unless you did a lot of stuff where you walked around your arms that stressed them, right? But your legs generally have higher bone density. Well, if you were to take other parts of your body, like is shown here, like your head or your shin or other parts, and bang them against hard objects, small amounts of time, slowly building it up over years, you actually will increase the bone density in those parts of your body. And in fact, it doesn't have to be quite as severe as we see here, but we, what's interesting is this was shown even in the comic books back in the 80s. Um, Frank Miller showed this in a uh, thing called Batman Year One, where we see Batman sort of hitting all these things and doing crazy stuff like chopping a tree in half and whatnot, which is a bit extreme, I would have to say. But the point is that body condition like this will increase the bone density in Batman's body, parts of his body that he needs strong. He would actually have to do this kind of conditioning for his training. But it's, it can be very hard on your body, as you might guess. But here's the idea of this ultra structure of a bone, like say a long bone in your leg, like your femur. And we can see that if we get all the way down here to the very small parts of the bone, stresses are being experienced when impact is happening, like running, walking, or banging his limbs into things that change the stress on the, on the body that give increased bone density. Batman would need to do this. An example of what this would look like is shown here on the right with high-speed video. Everybody familiar with what high-speed video is? That's where you get, you know, 1,000 frames per second. You might have seen lots of TV commercials where somebody like, hits a golf ball and then the golf ball squishes against the, the head of the golf club and then takes off. That kind of thing, because you can see everything very, how rapidly those changes are happening. You can see it very clearly with high-speed images.